anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? Doing all right. Um, I think we have a lot to do today, Kyle, so let's not... Actually, hold on. Hold on. It's becoming tradition. All the people have been asking, and it's becoming a tradition. Well, wow. There it was. You know, you know, it's a good day, Jared. It's a good day as we're recording this. It's always a good day when, when Ohio State beats the living crap out of yeah. Michigan. Yeah, yeah, it's a good of course. Day. It's a good day. The Ohio State basketball beat Michigan basketball uh, in our today. But uh, most like. people's yesterday, most people's listening to this yesterday. Um, but Kyle, we do, we do have a lot to do today. Um, last year at about this time, I think we're maybe about a, I think we're about 13 months off from the last time we did this. We asked the question, what would the big 10 look like in 2030? And in that episode, um, we basically devised a new schedule system and we were right I, about some of the things about some of the things, Austin. Uh, and we were right about a few things. Uh, and then there's a few other things uh, that we just ha have not, we don't know if we're right about yet. Obviously it's a 2030 prediction. Um, so let's this is actually before we get into the new thing, I want to let's take a quick peek at the I'm going to switch screens. This is what we laid out last year. Um, basically, we predicted a uh, 2016 Big Ten, 26 teams in the 2030 version of the Big Ten. And then we did a protected rivalry scheduling system where every team has three protected rivals. Um, if for the YouTube folk, um, that the board that we created on that show is, is currently on the, uh, I remember that episode. It was fun. It was. And, and by the way, I've already put it in the show notes. Every time I say, I'll put a link to the old show, I'll put a link to the old show in the, in the show notes. And then I never do it. It's already in the show notes. It's already there. I promise if you go down, uh, the, the last episode is actually in the uh, notes of this episode. So you can go and listen to it if you want to. He came to class prepared because if I don't if I don't do it before, I never will do it is the thing. So that's on the screen. Um, I Again, for the YouTube folk, you guys can see it. But for the podcast people i it's it's too much just to sort of read and throw at you unfortunately so you can either check it on you on youtube or you can go back and listen to the old episode um today we're doing something different we are uh by the way uh, sorry i'm gonna toot my own horn real quick or toot our own horn real quick when we created this uh oregon and washington were not yet in the big 10 Just, just want to point that out. Uh, USC and UCLA uh, had been, uh, had been. Yeah, they were still fresh. Yeah, uh, was was announced. They 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 had been announced, but uh, Washington and Oregon had not been. Just to not, and we did. And if you go back even further, if you go back even further, we did also uh, predict USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten uh, a a full eleven months before that news broke so just trying to lay down some credentials here if you're a fresh listener but kyle let's talk about a different system and this is right. um partially inspired or maybe entirely inspired um by a post in the discord server by one mr uh austin in our discord one of our discord moderators he uh, he laid out a four division SEC and Big Ten, and I'm like, eh, I can do better. <laughs> and that's basically the loose premise of this show. Um, we're going to do a 24. We're doing 24 teams this time. Last time we did 26, but we're trying to neat. We're trying to put it neat into four divisions. So we're doing 24 teams this time. Yeah. Ugh, divisions. 
I know. I'm, I'm, I, I still like, I yeah. vert personally, I still like the old system more. I like the three protected rival system. That's my preference. Takes my idea, then shits on me. Would, would, would you be surprised in any other way, Austin? So I I, per, I prefer the protected rival system over the divisional system, but uh, we're going to play podcast here and have some fun. So what we're going to do is um, I'm getting, I, I devised what is my uh, proposal for these four divisions. And then Kyle is going to tell me where he thinks I'm wrong. And we uh, based off of his input and maybe the chat's input, um, might make some adjustments. Is Kyle frozen? Did we lose Kyle? I'm here. Are you there, Kyle? Okay, you, you got very you grainy and frozen for a second. Just going to make sure you're okay. You're on the big screen here for a second. Hi. It may have been me for all I know. It may have been me. But yeah, you got very grainy and then froze up for a second. Okay. Um... <laughs> Austin's flirting with Kyle now. He's a married man, Austin. He's a married man. All right, let's get let's get started, Jared. Let's, let's get, get started. started. We're gonna start in the north. Um first in the north, I have Oregon and Washington. Now question. Uh, question? Question right away. Okay. Why are they in the north and not the west? I mean, they're in the northwest. It was a 50-50 proposition. I, they could have I mean, gone in either. I don't, I, I don't like where this has started already. I don't okay. like where this has started. One of the things I definitely tried to do in... Uh, so, my goals. My goals when making these... I wanted to put two power programs in each division. So I am trying to divide up the power. I wanted to try and keep some rivals together. I wanted it to make some geological sense, but that was not my highest priority. Having it be perfectly geographically sensical as far as the North is central, the East and the West. That was not my highest goal. I was, per I, I, was much more focused on getting two power programs in each division and trying to keep rivals together. And Oregon and Washington are literally uh, touching Canada and then touching the other state that touches Canada. For what it's worth. Yep. All right. All right. Let, let, let's see how much more wrong you're going to be here, but come on. All right. Uh, filling out the north, we're going to have Nebraska and Iowa. Now, is Nebraska all that northern? Eh. But again, the geographics uh, of it weren't my biggest concern. Now, definitely northern states are... Uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, uh, who round out the North. You don't know geography. I do know geography. I just don't care that much. It was not my highest priority. Those Iowa slash Oregon divisional games are going to be barn burners. <laughs> Won't they? And if they're, if, if Iowa is north, Nebraska is north. I was about to say, if you're going to complain about one of them, you have to complain about Nebraska. Yeah, it's Nebraska. Because because you can't you can't be mad at me for be for for geography, and then get mad at me f about Iowa and not Nebraska. Just saying, Oregon going to Kinnick will be something. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Listen, 
I, I, I laid this out the exact way you think I should have the first time I laid it out with Oregon and Washington in the West. And, but like I also had Northwestern in the North. I mean, you, you, you might as well just there give that division to, you might as well give that division to Oregon then here. What about Washington? What are you talking about? And by the way, you should have, you should have seen this we'll see division. How Washington does now. We'll see how Washington does. I know, now. I know they have a new coach. But I mean, like realistically speak, and by the way, Wisconsin is a very good middle of the road team. I think Nebraska is trending in the correct direction. But again, you should have seen this division before I shoehorned Oregon and Washington into it. It was a terrible division. To be fair, Washington has more playoff appearances than Oregon. They do. In fact, I'm just saying I tried to balance the power and there was no balancing of the power with what was essentially the Big Ten West parading as the Big Ten North. There was just no power in there. This had to happen. Otherwise, you were going to give a free pass to the North. Just some some quite front. You're just going to hand Iowa the North every year with Wisconsin and Nebraska, maybe sometimes winning it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the central. Right off the top, we got Ohio state and Michigan. Those are, those are our water Buffalo programs in the central. Look up. All right. Those uh, right. you're keeping start, Ohio starting, State and strong there. So like, keeping Ohio State and Michigan together. These are your power programs. Um, we're going to start rounding it out here. We're going to include Michigan State, trying to keep Michigan and Michigan State together for the sake of rivalry. Uh, then we're going to round that out with Purdue, Indiana, and Illinois. What's your what, what, what's your reason behind Purdue? I needed to put them somewhere. I quite I mean I want I did want to keep Indiana and Purdue together. I mean, if if anything, at least, at least you keeping them all together. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at one point I had Illinois and Northwestern in the north. I think is how I had it at one point, but then I kicked them out to put Oregon and Washington in there. Cause could you have imagined a North? Actually, I think a Northwestern in there at some point. I don't really remember. It doesn't matter, but I'm just saying, think about, by the way, we also are, are putting Ohio state and Illinois together for the sake of the Illibuck as Austin points out in the chat. But I'm just saying, imagine the North. If we took out Oregon and Washington and put in Purdue and Northwestern, or Illinois and Northwestern. Just, just look at that division. Yeah, Shoehorning Oregon and Washington it. into the North had to happen. It had to happen. Yeah, I don't have it. Yep, don't have an issue with with what you have here for this central year. So, I mean, if we're being honest, it's it's Ohio State and Michigan. Mm -hmm. Sparty is sometimes good, but it's pretty basement dwellery after that. But I also think that that's kind of fair considering Ohio State and Michigan are, you know, at least historically the two power programs in the entire conference. Now, of course, we're adding some heavy hitters in this prediction model and in real life. Uh, Austin says East is probably going to be the easy division Penn State will win it or will often win it. Uh, well, OK, you don't you don't know I, I who I'm I predicting. Where, I think I know where Jared's going with this. You don't know who I'm predicting into the conference in totality yet. Because while, yes, Penn State is in the east. Uh, no, Kyle, I do not have Notre Ooh. Dame in the east. 
However, I do have Florida State. Florida State in the Big Ten East. Those are your two power programs in that division. I think uh, FSU ends up in the SEC, ends up an SEC school with Clemson. Maybe. There, there is no school where I am more 50-50 as far as, I like, I know they're going to go to one of the power two. And I feel very 50-50 about which one it'll be. Because Clemson's going to go to the SEC period. Uh, I think I'm fairly 50, 50 on Miami as well, actually. Um, now that I think about it, they want the sec, but does the sec want them? Yes. Because ESPN will tell them that they want them. And they also, it's an arms race at this point. Clemson and sec are destined for one for one another. The big 10 doesn't want Clemson. The sec wants a football school. I think FSU prefers the Big Ten. I think so, too. Florida State is a strong academic university, and there's an incredible amount, there's incredible advantages to being in the Big Ten. They just aren't an AA school, AAU school yet, yet being a, yeah, they just barely missed accreditation last time. They'll, they'll get there. They'll get there. All right. The East with expansion, you have to get past the AAU at some point. They don't think you do. Um, so now for East. Florida, for Florida state, you might look past it, but no, I don't think you, you do. Mm -hmm. So then the East then Jared would have to be Rutgers in Maryland over there. Uh, we do have Rutgers and we do have Maryland. Keeping that Maryland Penn and State guess, rivalry guess, going. Yep. Keeping that Maryland Rutgers no, 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 rivalry no, no, going. It's, it's to keep the it's it's to keep that Penn State Rutgers rivalry. Let's let's get let's get that straight. Uh I, I think the Maryland Penn State has has more juice <laughs> behind it. Um and then it, you gotta put in UNC. We've talked about UNC for many, I, many I, years. I think the Big Ten and North Carolina are mm -hmm. are very destined. It's almost as yes. much as Clemson, almost as much as Clemson and the SEC are destined for one another. Um, I think North Carolina and the Big Ten are destined for one another. Mm -hmm. And then I would guess the last one is the other um, ACC team that would come over as well. Uh, I, it is an ace. It is okay. First off, like it's an ACC. It is ACC. I, I think there's three good candidates here. Yeah, you, you so might too. be I mean, thinking you could, put in, you, could, you could put in Virginia. You could put, put in, in Virginia. Duke. You could put in Duke. Put in Duke. Um, you're you're missing you're missing the one I chose. I will say it is a school that for whatever reason doesn't, especially among football fans, I don't think people realize that it actually is a really good academic institution. And in fact, did just get AAU accreditation recently. And no, it's not NC State, Austin. Not wait. You're, you're not talking about another Florida team. Are I am you? talking about another Florida team. Oh boy. The Miami Hurricanes. <laughs> no, I, 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 sorry, Jared. Sorry. I, I do not see that. I do not. I do not see that. No. They're an excellent academic university. It gives you an incredibly strong foothold into the state of Florida. Um, sure. If we can take Jason Taylor from them, is that a part of the trade? Like how we got Chip Kelly? <laughs> I think the guy that they just signed on to into the program as a pass rush pass rush spe specialist. I think they gave him an analyst job or something. I think he's, I think he's the guy that takes over at in the defensive line spot. 
I forget his name though. Yeah, I just, I just don't. I understand what you're saying about with Miami and the, um, in the, in the recent um, research that they have, but just, yeah, I, I, I just don't see, I just don't see the Big Ten doing that, especially like with all the, um, the all the issues that they've had around their athletic programs too. I just. Oh, let's let's not cast stone style. It. Let's let's not I mean, cast. I, I mean, you're, you're you're trying you're trying to bring in you're trying to bring in someone versus someone who's already in the Big Ten, though. This is the point that we're trying to get at. What do you, I, I don't follow? Get at. I, I don't follow. What are you saying? I, mean, I, I feel that I feel that the Big Ten would go after more more of Duke. Virginia, I think, would be like the top two. I, I think, I think, outside you, of UNC, I think you can make make a very strong case for both of those schools. You can make a very str- strong case for both of those schools. I, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. And in fact, had I done a 26 team conference, those are probably the two schools I add are are Duke and Virginia. Those would be the two schools. When I had to cut this down from 26 to 24, those are the two schools that I cut. But, um, but, but for sure, Jared, you, you aren't you aren't leaving out Notre Dame. Well, we're going out west. Let's see who ends up in this division. To um, no surprise, your, we have that's USC. Your Cal, that's your Cal teams. Mm hmm. And, you know, we got UCLA, we got Stanford, we got California. Yep. Got got our California teams. Uh, our our second, uh, to go along with USC, however, in the power conference, or as the, as the two power teams, we got Notre Dame. Notre Dame does not like to think of itself as a Midwest school. Man, you're, you're going to have... <laughs> Notre Dame and Northwestern going way out, way out there to the west. Yeah. Listen, they called themselves Northwestern. This is their own fault. They already play USC, Stanford, Cal. Exactly. Notre Dame already plays a strong West Coast schedule. I think they fly out of Chicago at least. Yeah, no, we 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 would have screwed Penn State if we just <laughs> sent Penn State out there because their airport, I think, only uh, handles prop planes. I'm kidding, sort of. <laughs> this is my proposal for a 24 team Big Ten with four divisions. She like. I hate it. I mean, <laughs> you, you you move move. In my opinion, in my opinion. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna create a division where it's just purely uh, former Pac-12 teams. But Notre Dame, Northwestern swap out with Oregon and Washington. There's too much power. In, there's too much power in that. That that was my first revision. That was my first revision. And this and this it's is too why much power you don't have west. divisions. Then this is why no, you don't have divisions. That's not the game then. we're playing today, Kyle. <laughs> I agree. I prefer the 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 proposal from 13 months ago. I get two extra teams in that proposal. We just do three protected rivals per team. I prefer that system, but that's not the game we're playing today. Yes, we did, Chop. Yes, we did. That's not the game we're playing today. We're doing divisions. And it, obviously there's a version of this that has Oregon and Washington out in the West. And it's basically just the new pack six. But you have, you would have USC, Oregon and Washington all in the same division And you'd have Northwestern, and even if we put Notre Dame in the North, 
even if we put Notre Dame in the North, if we swap Northwestern and Notre Dame for Oregon and Washington, one good color pa- balance there, good color balance there, but you're just handing Notre Dame a division title every year. If you're doing that. You know, we're talking about Notre Dame, right? You know, we're talking about Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Northwestern, right? Mm-hmm. Have you, have you seen what the Big Ten have you seen what the Big Ten West has Notre produced? Dame won anything? When was the last time the Big Ten West won anything? Anyone Never. in the Big Ten West? Never. We can't we can't let that continue. We have to We can't let that continue. Division, so. I agree. <laughs> Again, I like I like last year's proposal more, but that's not the game we're playing today, Kyle. 2012 and 2013. Weren't we still legends and leaders back then? Sparty beat us. Well, then that was definitely legends and leaders because both Ohio State and Michigan or in Michigan State are in the East. Uh, 2011 was Wisconsin Rose Bowl and they lost to TCU. I, we, we couldn't, we couldn't let that many teams from the big 10 West continue continuing to just swirl in a suck circle. It's, we couldn't let it do it. We had to inject some goals, some, some high standards into that group. And that's what Oregon and Washington are there for. Kyle, we need to do a commercial break. Um, If you want to avoid these commercials, uh, go ahead and join our Patreon. Uh, You can support the podcast and avoid these commercial breaks on the uh, audio podcast feed uh you can do that for two excuse me three dollars a month or 32 dollars a year over at patreon.thesloopcast.com uh here come the spreaker ads now okay Kyle. um you have any additional things you want to cover here or uh do you want to move on to my sec proposal Just it's just hard for me seeing, just seeing Northwestern in that same division. But I mean, or just, just I'm, I'm just, just I'm gonna be real honest. Just, I just fucked over Northwestern in this. You fuck over Northwestern, whatever division you put them in. Thank you. You now we're on the same wavelength. Now you're just, now you're just screwing with them on, on traveling. Meh, I w- I'm sorry. Something had to break somewhere. Like it's it's not a, it was never going to be perfect. And right, I wasn't let's, going let's to, to the again. To the I wasn't going to let then. the Big Ten West continue to just be terrible all the time. All right, let's move on to the SEC. All right, Kyle, we have the Gulf Coast, the Wild West, the South Coast, and the Central. Where would you like to start? Oh, Gulf North- Coast sounds like fun. Northwestern went eight and five last year. Yes, they did that in the awful Big Ten West. That is... That is not because Northwestern was good. It's because the Big Ten West is terrible, which is why we need to inject some life into those teams and couldn't just let that division continue to be terrible all the time. All right. The golf sounds like this would be your power division then. Just the same way with the Big Ten. I tried to divide up the power. I did my best to divide up the power the best I could. I did my best to preserve rivalries the best that I could. Um, The geography might get a little wonky here and there because that was not my highest priority. 
Mm-hmm. Well, well I would assume the Gulf the Gulf Coast would have would have like LSU and Alabama and Auburn. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, designating Alabama and LSU as the two power teams in that in that division. <laughs> Rutgers in the West. So, are you just proposing that I just screw over Rutgers instead of Northwestern? Northwestern's already halfway there. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, how many? Three more. Two three, more. Three more. Three more. Three more. So I would guess maybe the Mississippis. The Mississippis. Ah, oh, look at that. Kyle, this is geography. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to give you this one because I don't want to spend a lot of time. You trying to remember that Arkansas exists. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. It's just they're just one of the more forgettable teams in the SEC. We weren't going to spend a lot of time. Uh, th- yeah, this I one think, felt very natural. That one's fair. This yeah, felt very natural. Natural, yeah. All right, all right. Let's do let's do the South Coast then. I know I'm going to move around here f- with you, Jared. But That's okay. South Coast sounds pretty pretty straightforward for a lot of them. I would assume that would be like that would be like Florida and Florida? South Carolina. South Carolina. You've not named either of the designated power teams yet. Although this is Florida, uh, definitely one of the better quote unquote third teams for sure. Now you're missing an incredibly yeah. obvious one. George is not a coast. <laughs> oh, they're all going to literally be on the coast. <laughs> the state of George is on the coast. I get that Athens isn't, but the state is. He he um, meant he meant Athens, Zach. Yeah. He, he, then I would, I would then I would say probably some new new schools in here, like Clemson. I think Clemson, like Clemson? would make sense in here. Look at that, jeez! I have not. Jared has not shared this with me, so. <laughs> um tennessee no see tennessee's okay, it, okay uh, at least all of these Vander, the state is Vanderbilt. on the coast vanderbilt no or vanderbilt right nope all of these nope. the state not there nope uh, i'll give you a hint neither of these teams are currently in the sec Ooh. okay um, I think I think this would make sense where Miami goes. <clears throat> if if my if, this is probably where Miami would have gone had I not put them in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. So I would guess uh, there is NC water State. near Georgia. <laughs> Athens is on do, a do lake. You have NC, <laughs> do you have NC State going to going to? I do. The SEC. There's the Wolf Pack. All right. And then um, I would guess Virginia Tech. No, sir. Okay. All right. Who, uh, who, who's, the, who's the last one? Georgia Tech. You had the wrong tech. Do, do, uh, okay. All right. You had the wrong tech. Yeah. So that's Georgia, Clemson, Florida, Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, and South Carolina. Georgia Tech going 0 and 5 every year here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The Gamecocks are pretty bad sometimes too. Uh, that's true. But yeah, no, this is gonna be a rough go for Georgia Tech for sure. This almost seems like a especially the way these past few seasons with with Clemson and Florida, this seems like a sure division for Georgia. You have to figure that either Florida or Clemson should be up in any given year, even if we can't count on both of them to be up every year. One of them should be up in any given year. And I also say like this has pretty decent depth. No, it doesn't. I mean, (laughs) because like 
there's a very clear bottom and top half in this division. Very clear. All right, Kyle, do you want to go uh, Wild West or do you want to go Central? Sure. This, this, sound, this sounds like everybody in Texas and Oklahoma. It's, it's, very, it's, very, <laughs> it's very Big 12 coded. It is very Big yes. 12 coded. <laughs> Michigan yes, Kink is very, my bottom half. Very Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma. Nope, um, not Oklahoma. Again, Kyle. Remember, I'm trying. You, you, you are, you are not, you are not going to. You, you talked about rivalries. I did. How could you not have Texas and Oklahoma, Jerry? Because my first priority. How could priori- you not have Texas and Oklahoma? My first priority was division of power. Well, then that's Texas and Oklahoma done. And if you I, say Texas A and M, you are full of shit. Well, there's a Texas is clear is the clear power team here. And then much like with Clemson and Florida, like in the South Coast, there's maybe not a clear second team, but there's two very good teams here in in two and three. Texas A&M and. I guess I guess it would have to be a new a new school then. It is a new school. Very good team from the Big 12, even if they weren't very, like, great last year in particular. I still think that they're a strong program. I guess guess that's the that's the uh, the the purple uh, froghorns over there, right? Yes, sir. That is TCU. Um, Then we I guess Baylor. Baylor. No, no. no, Is Baylor on here? No, no Baylor. Uh, remember that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess Missouri. I'm going to guess Missouri is in here. Yes. And remember that Missouri was in the big 12, not that long mm-hmm. ago. Yep. Would you, would you throw in Kentucky as well? Or maybe Kentucky would be central. Kentucky central. Uh, these next two teams are, uh, I'm going to give you a hint. They are currently big 12 teams. Barely. So Oklahoma State. No, I kept Oklahoma and Oklahoma together or Oklahoma State and Oklahoma together uh, in the central. We went we went out west for this one. These these are technically Big 12 schools, although are you uh, are you doing Kansas, Kansas State? I am not. Go, go, go west. Go west, young man. Go west. Get some recruiting territory. BYU? BYU? No. Not not that okay. far north. West, west, but not north. Texas Tech? No. We have Arizona State and Arizona. Mm. We're getting some recruiting That's territory. Right. I remember that conversation. Remember getting getting some recruiting territory here. Arizona's producing more and more good players. You're going to spread that footprint out a good bit. Um, a lot of people. Arizona's a very fast growing state, so it's a lot of eyes. It's a lot of recruiting territory. Uh, I don't know if either of these teams are going to be super competitive right away, but yeah. It is what it is. So this 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 division uh, is a you have like a very clear number one, but you have three very good next rung teams. Texas A and M, TCU, and Missouri are three. They, neither of them might be like a true power program the way Texas is, but you do have three very good teams again trying to balance our power a bit yeah i still still think oklahoma should be over there but i mean they can still do a protected rivalry game you know what i'm saying like all right so central obviously would have oklahoma would have 
the rest of the SEC, Kentucky and Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee Vanderbilt is just Kentucky. getting screwed. Tennessee is getting screwed with all, all of their rivalries. Yeah. It's in my defense, literally everybody in the SEC is a rival. Everyone's a rival with everyone else. All right. So so you got two more teams. So I'm going to Everyone is Minnesota in the big in the SEC. All right. So two more te- two more teams. These are new teams, I would guess. Yeah, you you really should already have one of them. I already told you who one of them are in a previous. If you just take a look at the board, you currently have Oklahoma, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky. Um, I'm trying to think who else we who, who, else who we did, talked about. It wasn't who who did I say was automatically coming with Oklahoma? Oh yeah, Oklahoma State. There you go. Mm-hmm. And then we have an additional team. Would you like to know which conference they're coming from, at the very least? Sure. They are coming from the ACC. ACC. You did guess them at one point. I'll say that. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. The Hokies. God, this is a this is a pure. So you got Texas is the clear favor in the wild wild in the wild west, and Oklahoma is even more so the clear favorite in the central. Yeah, I, I feel I feel I feel if you're trying to really balance this off, the Gulf Coast is heavily heavily. Um, I don't weighted more. I don't think so. You got to remember Nick Saban's gone. You got to remember Ole Miss is good right now, but they're not historically like a power program. Like I know that they're good right now, but let's 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 not be too now focused. And LSU, LSU is just a very sporadic program. They are sometimes amazing and sometimes dog shit. Auburn sucks most of the time. Mississippi State sucks most of the time. Arkansas sucks most of the time. I don't think it's that great of a division. If anything, I would say South, the South Coast is a really strong division. I don't think, I don't know if anyone goes three deep quite as hard as, as South Coast goes hard. That Georgia, Clemson, Florida trio is a lot. One of the things I sort of figured out in putting this together is actually like how strong the Big Ten is now compared to the SEC. When you actually yeah, break no, it, I mean, the, when you the, actually the, start the to the break school, it down, the that. I mean, this, yeah, the schools that the Big Ten would be bringing in, yeah, I mean, Oregon and Washington, okay, you can compare those to, like, Texas and Oklahoma. Sure. Sure. I mean, I mean, okay, let, let, let me rephrase that. Oregon and USC. Let's just say Oregon and USC are like Texas and um, Oklahoma. Um, and then Washington has been past few years has been pretty good. Notre Dame has been just a blue collar or a um, a blue collar, just a um, I cannot think right now, Jared. Um, just another just another blue blue team, blue uh, football team here. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, I think I think for the teams that the Big Ten is bringing in here, definitely a lot more firepower, especially especially if they can get Florida State. Yeah, no no brainer. And I am leaning. But I I still, have, I still have a hard time seeing. I still have a hard time seeing Big Ten going out going to get um, Florida State, let alone Miami. 
uh, Florida State is, I, I'm 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 like 55, 45 Florida State going to the Big Ten versus the SEC. They're going to leave the ACC. That's going to happen. They're going to go to the Big Ten or the SEC. That's going to happen. The Big Ten to this point has been much more aggressive in pursuing teams than the SEC has been. Now, with Florida State on the table, that might change. It's going to have to change. They can't let the Big Ten into Florida. But I think it's the more desirable location if you're Florida State. Especially if you're trying to get into the AAU. You start rubbing some shoulders with the Big Ten members who make up a good chunk of the AAU voting block to get admission to the Big Ten. Not that that helped Nebraska. Yep. But I'm just saying when 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 Florida State announces to whatever side they're going, Jared, whenever whenever it's going to be, it could be soon, could be. A year from now, I mean, I, I anticipate it to be pretty quickly. I don't know how quick it would be. Definitely within the next two years. Definitely. Maybe maybe, maybe next year. Within the next year, they may just announce to go somewhere. When the ACC teams decide that they are able to, and when I say yeah. that, I mean legally, because there's lawsuits about... TV rights and yada, yada, yada. There's all all this stuff, right? When they decide they are able to, I would not be surprised if you saw a ACC immediate exodus. Yes, I I definitely see that. Yeah, I would. I would not be surprised if you just immediately see Florida State, North Carolina, Notre Dame, yes, Notre Dame, and then another ACC school joined the Big Ten. I said Miami in this. Maybe it's Virginia. I, I, Maybe it's yeah, Duke. I, I would, I, I think Virginia. Maybe. Well, I mean, well, maybe. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to put my flag down real hard on any one of those three. I'm not going to do it. But it'll be one of those three. It might be more than one of those three, quite frankly. And eventually, because don't forget, Stanford and California are also technically ACC ACC schools right now, somehow. Um, I do think they eventually end up in the Big Ten as well. We actually got confirmation a few weeks ago that the Big Ten wanted Stanford and California. But Fox wasn't going to increase TV money to do it. Because like when the Big Ten brought in USC and UCLA, the Big Ten said, or excuse me, Fox said, here, have some more money. You added additional product, we will give you more money. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened with Oregon and Washington. Big Ten says, we have Oregon and Washington. Fox said, here, have some more money. But when the Big Ten said, we want Stanford in California, Fox said, we're not paying you for Stanford in California. And and that's when that fell through. Because the, the rest of the Big Ten didn't want to split up their profits with two additional teams. Splitting up your profits is very easy to do when Fox is footing the bill. Cause you're not really splitting up your profits yep. at that point. So can, can, can we, for the old heads in the room, can you talk about how fun it would be to have Notre Dame and Miami in the same conference? <laughs> yeah. Just saying, just saying, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to put my foot down on Miami. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, again, it might be Virginia. It might be Duke. And again, it could be 26 teams and it could be all three of them. 
Kyle, let's do one more ad break. Um, if you want to avoid these ad breaks, you can become a patron over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. It's only $3 a month or $32 a year uh, to get ad-free versions of the show, to get early access to the show, uh, get premium access to our Discord server. This entire episode was born out of the Discord server, as I told you at the beginning of the show. You know, these are the type of conversations that we have in the Discord server, and now here we are. Um So if you want to avoid these ads, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Here are the ads now. I guess my point I was, was I was trying to make. If this plays out the way I expect it to play out. Mm-hmm. Look, look at the top two teams. In each of the Big Ten divisions, Oregon, Washington, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Florida State, USC, Notre Dame. Only two of those are projections, by the way. Only two of those are projections. Look at the top two in each division in the SEC. Alabama, LSU, Texas, and then take your pick between Texas A&M and TCU. Georgia, Clemson, Oklahoma, Tennessee. The tides are shifting. Big Ten is going to be on top here soon. The Big Ten has been more aggressive in expansion. And I know there's a lot of people out there that really want the Big Ten to go get Clemson. I'm just telling you that's not going to happen. It's not a culture fit. It's not going to happen. No, nope. Clemson will not happen. No. Not 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 going to happen. What if overaggression backfires? Again, Fox has been willing to pay them. There's no real backfire there, in my opinion. I mean, the backfire is that, like, we all, I mean, if, if, we're if, all if risking kind of ruining go, college football, to be honest. I mean, if the Big Ten does go down to Florida, I mean, that's a... That's a big area. That's a that's a big area that they have zero presence. Right. Right now, I mean, they they got they got they got the New England states. Got that. They're going to get um, Virginia, North Carolina, um, for um, when UNC would come over. Okay, that's a, that's another that's a new, good another good uh, TV market. You go down to Florida. Yeah, that's it's it's a no brainer. There's there's no backfire if Florida State would come to the Big Ten. That that is so much more money that the Big Ten would be um, rolling in on. By the way, all all of one of the other things that sort of was the catalyst for doing this show was the news that broke this week. I'm actually going to go ahead and hop off of the screen. Uh, news broke this week that. A 14 team playoff is coming, not a 12, although I don't think this will take effect this year. So we might only have a 12 team playoff for one year. It's for the next two years. Is it next two, two two years? I think so. And then then we're going to a 14 team playoff, which is one too many in my opinion, but no one asked me. But I think the surprising news is that one team... Well, two one one team on each side, but two teams in total will get a bye. And that those two teams will be the Big Ten and SEC champions. Currently, Clemson, Florida State, Notre Dame, although that's really it at this point. TCU have no ability to earn a bye week. None. Only a Big Ten and SEC team can earn a bye week in the 14-team playoff. Additionally, six of the 14 spots will be going split evenly between the Big Ten and the SEC. Six auto qualifiers for the two conferences. 
including exclusive rights over the bye weeks. You get the bye weeks from your top two teams, I assume. The top two teams. Uh, the winners of the, the Big weeks. Ten and the winners of the SEC. <clears throat> okay. Like it, it's 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 I think it's specific. And then four, and then four other teams. Well, no, it's it's six in total. Well, yeah, and, and so it's yeah six in total. Those two, two and then four more. Oh yeah, I, we we keep jumping back and forth between talking each conference in total. Yeah, my bad. Um, the current ACC. And, and, and honestly, and honestly, and honestly, for how many for all the teams we just mentioned, sh- shouldn't there be more? Yes. <laughs> for for. For, for the teams yes. that, that we just announced here? Yeah. Because not only... So, like, the Big Ten and the SEC are getting three auto qualifiers each. The ACC and the Big 12 are getting two auto qualifiers each. They don't have that many good teams left, especially in the no. Big 12. The ACC, you can at least say, well, Florida State and Clemson. But like, who are your two auto qualifiers going to be from the from the Big 12? Oklahoma State and TCU? Kansas. Kansas, Kansas State, Baylor. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Houston. I almost put Houston in the SEC, not going to lie. Um, yeah, it's. People are complaining about like the Big Ten and the SEC either overstepping or appropriately stepping to secure real estate in the. But quite frankly, Two teams auto qualifying for each the ACC and the Big 12 at this point. That's a pretty good deal, if you ask me, because I did. The, I, I went through last year's numbers. Those teams don't get two teams each. If we're just going by the top teams. Um, Notre Dame is guaranteed a spot if they place in the top 14 which feels like a weird thing to write into the contract considering duh. Of course. And a uh, additional conference champion, a group of five, if you will, uh, is guaranteed a spot in the playoff, which leaves either two or three auto qual- or um, non-auto qualifiers. Wild card spots. At large spots, if you will, um, you might might as well just give those to the Big Ten and SEC then. Well, Notre Dame, Notre Dame is guaranteed one of those spots if they finish in the top fourteen, which again feels like a weird thing to say because, of course, they would. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious on, but if Notre Dame finishes in the top fourteen, they're guaranteed one of those three spots. But yeah, those other I'm spots are going to be dominated. Their, their final rankings. I I if you scroll up in the Sloop oh. Cats only page, I actually did this already. Wow. So if you go back to 2000 and since 2015, yeah, they would have made it every year other than the 2022 year. Every year but the 2022 year. But yeah, it's... Yeah, here's... Um, where's, where's that at? Here you go. Yeah, if you're going, if you're going off of... Well, that's... Those would be end-of-season ranks and not... But yeah, I mean, I get your point regardless. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, yeah, I'm probably, oh, nope, there it is. I'm going to hold on real quick for me. Save 
Let me throw this in the chat. I'm going to throw this in the chat. I'm going to talk while I throw it in the chat. Um, that's going to be too small for anyone to read in the chat. But uh, based off of the final college football playoff committee rankings, so this is before the bowl games, these are the committee's rankings, you would have had, and I obviously projected everyone into their modern conferences, your three auto qualifiers from the Big Ten would have been Michigan, Washington, and Ohio State at 1, 2, and 7. Your auto qualifiers from the SEC would have been Texas, Alabama, and Georgia at 3, 4, and 6. Your Big 12 representatives would be Arizona and Oklahoma State at 14 and 20. Mm -hmm. Y'all are telling me the SEC and the Big 10 overstepped? The Big 12 is getting two auto qualifiers at 14 and 20. The ACC's two auto, quali auto qualifiers are Florida State and Louisville at 5 and 15. Notre Dame is not guaranteed a spot because they finished at 16th. So your three at-large teams would have been Oregon from the Big Ten, Missouri from the SEC, and Penn State from the Big Ten getting the final, well, I guess not the final, well, yeah, the final the final at-large spot uh, at number 10. Leaving Ole Miss, Oklahoma, and LSU at 11, 12, and 13 on the bubble. So just to point this out, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Well, not 14 because the we still would give Liberty the final spot. So not 14. Because Liberty was the highest ranking champion from a group of five, right? Um, so you essentially are losing Ole Miss, Oklahoma, and LSU in order to shoehorn Arizona, Louisville, and Oklahoma State into the playoffs. Under this system. And you're telling me the SEC and the Big Ten overstepped? Nope. No. Not based on last year's. Listen, you could have an eight after the SEC and the Big Ten eventually break away and make up their own rules. We gave you the divisions. The winner of each division plays in a four team playoff. The winner of the Big Ten and the winner of the SEC play each other, and you have an eight, you have a, a four-team playoff in the North, a four-team playoff in the South, and then the champions play each other. So you have basically an eight-team playoff. You don't need any committee rankings. You don't need. You don't need a committee. You don't need polls. You settle it on the field. Four division champions. One conference or two conference champions. One national champion. And if anyone doesn't like it. Too bad. Too bad. That's where it's going. It may not be an 18 playoff. It probably won't be an 18 playoff. It'll probably be a 12 team playoff. There'll probably be at large spots in there, but that's where we're going. Any final thoughts, Kyle? I just, I just don't think you're crazy for splitting up Oklahoma and Texas, but we're just splitting hairs. All right. So in, what in if Miami I, would go to the big 10? What if I split? Nah, I like it. I like it. Because once again, the like the problem I was talking about before, if you if you put Texas and Oklahoma in the same division, you're you're creating one really good division and then creating another division where your power teams are going to be Tennessee and TCU.
it's not great. There aren't. There isn't a perfect solution. Look, 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 look at look at look at look at your your proposal for the Big Ten. All right, I guess we're doing with this. Ohio with Ohio State and Michigan. But I have I have two power programs in okay, let, each in each let, let's, one. Let, let's just okay. Let's just say let's let's look at back historically. Um, before before um the last two years, like before Michigan started um being good again. Uh, uh, started cheating. Um, sure. Same thing. <laughs> That's just Ohio State. That's just Ohio State. I mean, and the North is just Oregon if Washington doesn't go through their coaching no. turnover well. And if Florida state is really hammered by their recruiting sanctions, then that's that division's all Penn state. If Notre Dame, the coaching situation there doesn't get figured out. That division's going to be all USC. Like mm -hmm. there's only so many teams to go around and you just yeah. sort of hope that yeah. one of the other teams your Nebraska, your Michigan States, your North Carolinas, your UCLA's, that someone steps up and is really good in a year in which the other team isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess so. It's, it's just about putting the power, two power programs in each, and then trying to get some sort of even covering with the other ones. That's, that's what it is. That's what I got for you. Okay. Do you want me to redo all of this, but just using colors? This will be the red division. Yeah. This will be the orange division. This will be the yeah. yellow slash gold division. This will be the purple blue division. Well, you need to have one division that's all tigers. Well, I could, I could, I could do a division that's nothing but bulldogs and tigers. We, we could. Wait a minute, that, that's achievable. We're not, we're not. Let's, let's not, let's not do that, Jared. It's achievable, Kyle. Come on, we're all, we're only ten minutes over. <laughs> we can What's do this. We can do this. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Of course. All right, Kyle. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, come join the... I already plugged the... Uh, we're over. Discord.thesloopcast.com, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. Hey, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no, other than Ohio State on that hot streak in basketball. I mean, we'll, yeah. We'll see, we'll, see, we'll see if they can finish off winning on the road, which they are on a one-game winning streak on the road, Jared. <laughs> if they can do it, if they can do it to Rutgers and actually win a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament, uh, maybe. maybe, maybe what, maybe what they they might be able to get the um get the bid here, the bid for it, what? It, it's fun, the tournament. Which tournament? The tournament. Kyle. It, it, it honestly all depends on how well they do in the in the um in the Big Ten tournament. It, it really does. If if they only win Kyle. one game, two games, if they only won one or two games, no, they they got to um, they got to make it into they got to make it into the the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament. And if they make it that far, then there should be definitely a lot of conversations then about them being all that bubble to get in Kyle. Kyle. Are you actually entertaining the idea that Ohio state could make it into the tournament? Yes. 
There, okay. there is a, there is a shot. How much of a shot? Give me a number. Right now, I'd say I'd say like a thirty-three percent chance. Right, right now, you're you're high. No. Yeah. Uh, we need to end the show. I'm just gonna. We're gonna move on, and we're gonna end the show. Right. I. Nope, not gonna engage. Not gonna engage. Tonight's ending music is "Sink the Ship." Tonight's ending music is by a Cleveland-based pop punk hardcore band called Sink the Ship. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Sink the Ship.